on City Line. Get outside, embrace wonderful winter. Winter is my favorite season, and I'm not lying. It's true, I cry on March 21st. Are you kidding? I'm not joking. Stay warm with the perfect jacket. You're cold, you're grumpy, you hate winter. So staying warm is the key. Then Chef Randy is enjoying the outdoors. <laughs> the snow's fallen, we got the, we got the fire burn, and everything's very romantic out here. We just need a glass of wine. A hearty winter meal you can make. It's magical because it's very little effort and maximum flavor. And later, head outside for a polar picnic. You do this. I do this almost every single weekend in the winter. Every weekend? Every weekend. It's City Line with Tracy Moore. message for today's show and the message is get outside even though it's winter we want you to get outside and trust me I need to be convinced as well so we're gonna share so many ways that you can get outside and embrace the outdoors instead of just hibernating your whole winter away so let's prepare for cold and look stylish too why not do both we've got a roundup of the warmest jackets out there with Miss Julia Green <laughs> how you doing gorgeous Look oh, at wow. this. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So my husband would take one look at this and say, she is not dressed for outside. Well, this is and true. This, this is, is what I do wrong <laughs> every season and why I can't stand winter because I want to look like that. Okay, all right. You can look like this, but you have to dress appropriately when you are outside. I'm yes. not exactly outside right now, Trace. You're not. But, no, you but. look so good, Thank though. you. Oh, oh I thank love you. it. But that is honestly, my mom used to say that to, us, to me when I was a kid, yeah. that the only people that don't like winter are those that are cold. Yes, That's it. I'm That's cold. all there is to it. So if we're not cold, we're going to enjoy the season so much. So you have done some shopping for us. Yes, I have. You have brought the warmest and the best. You love winter. Winter is my favorite season, and I'm not lying. She said it's her favorite season. Favorite. She said what she said. It's true. I cry on March 21st. Are you kidding? I'm not joking. I love it so much. Okay, so you love winter, so obviously you dress properly. You're going to show us how we can follow suit. Yes. Um, and look very good while very doing good. it. Now, Tracy, I just have to say, when I look at all these mannequins, I look, yeah. I'm like, oh, there's me. These are yes. all literally my coats. They are all you. of them are my coats to show you all the different things that you do and different ways that you can use these coats and things like that. And I, you have good taste. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, these are good coats. So I want to start with this this the, one here. It's beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? So yeah. this is from a Canadian brand called Wuxley. Yes. So I absolutely adore the company. Everything is great. Now you can tell by the jacket that obviously they are focused on style. They are focused on warmth. But the nicest mm. thing, Tracy, as well, is that they are focused on sustainability. Nice. Everything in this coat is made with recycled materials. Wow. From the buttons to the belt to the fabric mm -hmm. to inside, absolutely everything. And what I'm gonna say right out of the get-go is this is an everyday coat yeah. in the winter. Yeah. This isn't hiking and in the you know outdoors in a parka. No, this is like getting out of an Uber. That's right. Okay? Like yes. let's be serious here. This is a yeah. city slicker coat. That's where everybody goes wrong. They're yeah. like, oh, I got my little jacket. No. It's cold. Like even even I, the professional, made a mistake today. When I was coming into the studio today, yeah. jumped out of the car, carrying my bags, forgot my gloves. The oh worst. my gosh. I got cold, I got grumpy. Yes. Had to shake it off. Don't worry, I shook it off. But yeah. that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. If you're cold, you're grumpy, you hate winter. So staying warm is the key. So out of the Uber, out of the cab, walking the dog, yes. going to the groceries, yes. all the things. I love that the bum is covered. Love it. My days of being 14 years old and wanting like the coat open and the bum exposed. Oh are yeah, yeah, over. yeah, 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 yeah. So I got, you know, I got so, an 18 year old still doing that. Right? I'm like, really, Mimi, come on, boots. They boots. go out there naked. They're yeah. in Birkenstocks like, and Crocs. Totally. And they're like, mm, happy winter. <laughs> totally. But this is to me perfect. That's so good. Okay. Okay, moving right along to this, very classy, this Right, lady. so this is a wool coat. So people yeah. think of this, you know, all the time. You think you have to have these big parkas down. Before there was down, there was wool, right? right? Wool is a fabric that keeps us very warm. It's a natural fiber. Mm -hmm. It keeps us really warm. So if you're going to go with a wool coat, I would suggest to thrift it yes. if you can. There's so many out there. This is my coat. It was a gift from my mother-in-law. She thrifted it. So I know so she spent good. no more than $60. I love my mother-in-law, but let's be serious. So <laughs> this is definitely. So if you are going 
gonna go for a vintage wool coat, I'm gonna give you two tips. Okay. Number one, make sure the the, the, the coat is wool, like 100% wool. Yep. If it's not, it's not gonna be as warm. Mm -hmm. Number two, check the lining. If you can get your hand in between the lining and the fabric, yep. this is really important because you wanna touch and feel for dust. If you feel dust, yeah. what that actually is, Tracy, is the fabric decomposing. Wool oh, is a natural fiber. Okay. It's going to decompose at some point. Yeah. So if it's all dusty, it's already started. So that's not the one we're taking. That, you ideally don't want that one. You right. can dry clean it and it will slow the process down. Yeah. But ideally just keep that in mind. Okay. And then the bonus tip, go for oversized. Yeah. So you can layer it, mm -hmm. right? So you've got the hoodie, the turtleneck, all of that stuff. This looks so good, and you need the oversized because you're not going to have any give in a beautiful wool coat. That's like this. exactly it. You keep your coats very well. Oh, thanks. I mean, thanks. and this is this is sort of what we all need to do to stop buying a million things. Exactly. Keep your stuff well. Totally. I, I'm talking to myself when I say that yeah. too. Like the, the, you keep them beautifully. Okay, now she is just chic. I want to be her friend. I know, don't I you? I want to hang out. Oh my God, I love this so much. I am like Beautiful. so obsessed. It's almost like getting embarrassing. My husband's like, again, Jules, you're wearing that coat again? <laughs> yes. So this is from Rutsack, which is a, such a great Canadian brand, almost 30 years, based yeah. out of Montreal. You know, they are specializing in high end, but also functional and like you can do things in these coats. So right. I literally ski in this coat, Tracy. That's a this is a coat that I coat. ski in. I adore it because it's a bit longer. Again, yes. spend a bit of time on the chairlift. So you yes. want to make sure everything is warm. So yes. you can just open up the zipper here. And then I've got the space to be able to nice. ski in it, which is really, really good. Yeah. Uh, it's got a minus 28 temperature so you stay warm it's minus 28 and then it's got a wind guard on it like a windshield so i don't ski that fast but uh, when i do come down the hill i feel nothing it's oh, so great amazing I know. and it looks so good yeah i wouldn't want that on my face i know that's my other joke my husband said if i could ski as good as i looked <laughs> Because you do look really good. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, no, I'm standing at the bottom making sure everyone's taking notes. I'm like, anyone going to right? save me? <laughs> Someone's going to ask me any minute where to get my coat. Where to get my coat. Yeah, right? Is everyone rolling on me right now yeah, as I go down the hill? Yeah, look totally. at me. Yeah, I totally. look so good. This is the only reason I want to ski. I want to look like that. Uh, yeah, I know. Exactly. Um, let's talk about this one here. It looks very functional. This is um, great. Very warm. This is from Arterix, yeah. which is another Canadian brand. We make great outerwear we here do. in Canada. We do. Mm -hmm. So this is a wonderful brand, Arterix. They have a great take-back program where they take back any of their products oh. repurpose awesome beautiful but what's so wonderful about Arterix is that it's lightweight and it's mm -hmm. got the Gore-Tex so yes. the Gore-Tex is waterproof different than water resistant you want to be waterproof if you truly are doing any outdoor I have skied in the rain in yeah. this coat I use this on the boat going over to the island in the rain okay. so you're dry completely dry Good. but it's very lightweight trace so I hike nice. in it a lot as well there's sides that open up the zippers so you can hike in it we get started to get a little bit hot but again that lightweight awesome travel coat like you could wear it in the airport and then yeah. also hit the slopes if you're traveling for skiing i just like how dry it is it's very dry because even and if it's very, a rainy very day warm. you're gonna find it's a bit cold and rainy so yes. it makes sense to have a coat like that that's gonna keep you warm and keep you totally dry yes you got Perfect. one more oh yes i do actually this so is look my look at the color look on this, this one. right okay so this is the latest addition to my repertoire that's and one of the main reasons is tracy if you take a look at all my coats they're a little bland in color well you can use I know. some color so i do need yeah. some color so this is that a joe fresh perfect. jacket Oh, and it I is love so that. great. It fits really lovely. Yeah. And then what I love about it, Tracy, besides the color, is um, they've got great style details, yes. right? So you can see it in the waist here. This yeah. comes in a little bit like here. Mm -hmm. And then the wrist. This is a tip to look for. You want elastic wrists so that the cold doesn't go up. So you've got that, that little bit under it. And then the price point on this jacket was fantastic as well. Good. Right. So you can get warmth. You can get it for a good price. Absolutely. Um, that one probably under $100 exactly. right now, which is amazing. Uh, and it's going to last you all season long. And like, okay. keep your coats well like Julia Grieve, man. <laughs> so good. So I love that you shared how to dress warm and enjoy our winter season uh, because we just sent you on an adventure oh, yes, to do just did. that. I love it. Get outside. Have a look. Bet you didn't know that skiing is one of my favorite winter activities. Now, I picked it up as an adult, so I'm still learning, but that's your sign that it's never too late. I brought you to Horseshoe Resort, where they have everything from tubing to snowshoeing, skating, and even my favorite, night skiing. I challenge you not to find something for everyone in the family. Oh, best part, you can wear your ski boots right to the hotel room. You didn't think it was gonna be all about sports, did you? Let me show you my perfect après ski. Come on. 
I pray ski or no ski at all, I'm here for all of it. And I found it at Veda Nordic Spa. Tervetuloa, Julia, welcome. Well, I'm gonna guide you through your authentic Finnish sauna experience today. I'm gonna introduce you to Lulu. Oh, what's Lulu? Lulu. Have I saying that another, one right? Lulu. 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 Take this ladle, okay. fill it up with some water, and then like pouring gravy over potatoes. You're gonna pour that <laughs> over these stones. Okay. Beautiful. You got a sweat on yet? Oh, I got sweat. <laughs> I got sweat. I've got something else to show you. All right. Okay, okay, okay. I see where you're going with this. So you're massaging your muscles. Yeah. You're encouraging yeah. circulation under the surface of your skin. Great. Okay, but Caroline, I can't control myself. Oh, cheap! <laughs> There's no particular order of amenities that you have to follow. You just want to follow that pattern of hot, cold, and relaxed. So, okay. you know, the sauna feeling a little too intense, a hot pool is also a great option. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. All right. <laughs> so now we're nice and hot. We're going to the cold plunge pool. Okay, if you say so. Remember, when we're going into the cold plunge, the most important thing is that you're breathing. Okay. Uh, you're gonna be in fight or flight for the first 10 seconds or so. <laughs> so, okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Exhale as you go in. Okay, exhale, okay. exhale, 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 exhale. And put your oh. hands here. Oh, God, put your are, you hands are you here. serious? Big breath in, hold it, let it out. Big breath in. You did awesome. great. Awesome. Very proud of you. You know, this is where you do the superhero pose. <laughs> I did it. You oh, did great. Did it. <laughs> this is the relaxation step. So we're going to do the hot, the cold, and now we want to let our bodies find balance again. So this is our hot stone room. These are granite beds. They're heated from below. All right. This is gorgeous. Spa side. That's awesome. Have a bit of a snack. Thank you so much. Oh, you're this so has welcome. honestly been one of the best days ever. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Just get outside. I promise you, you won't regret it. Ooh, look at that shot. Beautiful. I would get outside if I could just go straight to a spa. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a good time? So much fun. It was so wonderful. It looked amazing. Like, there's right. just something so beautifully Scandy about that. That was awesome. You know, being outside, and it's like, I'd want to do the hot. I don't know if I want to do the cold. Uh, but you make winter look very good. If you'd like an adventure like Julia's, you are in luck. Thanks to our friends at Destination Ontario, after the show, we're going to draw for a two-night stay at Horseshoe Resort, Alpine lift tickets, ski rentals, and passes for Veta Nordic Spa. The prize has a value of $1,450. Coming up, Chef Randy is out of the kitchen. And we're going super rustic today, Trace, because we're doing this all outside in our Dutch oven. getting outside no matter what the weather and nothing screams winter like a good old-fashioned backyard cooking adventure chef randy is in his backyard right now ready to cook it up for us so he's going to be making a delicious and hearty european goulash and chef i have to ask you this why goulash i've had it for the first time a couple years ago in hungary it was amazing why do you think this is the perfect winter meal outdoor winter meal Number one, Tracy, that it's hearty. You know, I think in the winter time we need heavy stuff that sticks to us. It's something that takes a long time to make, so you can have a fire going and put it on the fire. And the last and best thing about it, there's a lot of bills coming in December, so January <laughs> gets cold. This is cheap and cheerful. That was like almost the most important point right there. I love that. Okay, so how do we start with our goulash? <laughs> what do we need to uh, get started on it? 
first things first, I'm gonna tell you straight up, we're making a segadine goulash, which is made with pork and not with beef. So this comes from the pork shoulder and is about 20 bucks, but this was half, so 10, and this will make four portions easily. So you can do the math on that. It's like 250 a portion. Okay. So all we do is cube it up, and then we're gonna hit it with some salt and some pepper. We got some aromatics with some onions and some garlic here. And we're going super rustic today, Trace, because we're doing this all outside in our Dutch oven. So once we get everything inside, you're gonna get your fingers inside. You could use oil, but I've got some bacon fat here. You know those Sunday mornings when Leo's making you breakfast? Save that <laughs> fat. And you're just gonna massage all this in there, right? Oh my you can gosh. get the kids in there. This is what they're gonna like doing. That's a very luxurious massage right there. That's a bacon fat massage. <laughs> I'm ordering that next time I'm at the spa. Looks good. <laughs> But already, like I was just saying to Jeff, it's very romantic out here. And a massage <laughs> like that with bacon fat, that gets even more romantic. You know what I mean? <laughs> the snow has fallen. We got the, we got the fire burn and everything's very romantic out here. We just need a couple, a glass of wine. That's right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop that into a Dutch oven. And we're just gonna caramelize it up until we start to get a little bit of color like that. And this doesn't take long, like maybe 10 minutes, depending on what your fire looks like. But you see you're getting the nice flavors in the bottom. You got the sizzle. Oh, it's starting to stick a bit. That's exactly what we're after. So then what we're to do, this is where the goulash part comes in, Trace. Do you know what that is? Can you see that? Is it paprika? Whoa, bing, 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 bing. Yes. Got it. And we go super heavy, super heavy, like three tablespoons, right? And you're just gonna toast that up for about a minute or so. You're gonna stir that around and just get those aromatics kind of flying a little bit. And because it's the beauty of TV, we're only gonna toast it for 10 seconds. And I'll have to explain to Catherine why it doesn't taste nearly as toasted as it should. <laughs> but we're gonna jump right to the next step. I'm just wondering, <laughs> did you use uh, smoked so, paprika for that, Chef? Is it regular paprika? Which one do you prefer? No, 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 no. Spanish paprika, just regular Spanish paprika. The smoke stuff, we're gonna get the smoke naturally from the oven. I like to control it. I find the smoke stuff can be a little overpowering, especially when you're using a large amount like this. Fair. So then we go beef or chicken stock, just enough to top. And here is the secret ingredient, Tracy. I don't expect you to get this one, but do you have a guess? I don't know what that is. Is it mushy or is it more, like what, what's the texture there? <laughs> is it sauerkraut? Mm, it's very crowdy. It's sauerkraut. It's sauerkraut, <laughs> look at that. It's so crowdy. So the sauerkraut, believe it or not, it's very crowdy. <laughs> Juice and all, we chop it up really fine and we drop it up right inside. This is gonna, the enzymes in the, in the fermented sauerkraut are gonna help break down these large pieces of meat. It's gonna add like this crazy base layer flavor. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's magical because it's very little effort and maximum flavor. Beautiful. Okay, so that's doing the work. And now you're gonna throw in, what is that, a bay leaf there? We got a bay leaf, look at you going, and little caraway seeds. Nice. So those go in. And then one last thing, Trace, we need some goodness in there. What's that? You know, this is Ice like, cream. this is an organic, <laughs> heavy fat. <laughs> It could be out here. We could. We, it might turn into ice cream if we keep it out a little bit longer. It's sour cream, but it's oh about 25 minutes away from ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sour cream so is now, gonna do it. That oh, is awesome. Oh, this is this is romantic now, right? <laughs> Light a candle. Beautiful. The lid goes on, and then we go right back on the wood oven. Now the beautiful thing is, we just toss it in there. And it's gonna reduce, it's gonna do its thing. You can open the lid a little bit and then let the smoke kind of get in and char it and let it reduce down and put the lid back on. You gotta keep an eye on it and it's gonna take about three beers. Okay, you've timed it, which is so good. So exactly three beers later, you know that the recipe, it's good, it's done. It's good. So now we've got our second one after three beers. We've got this glorious pot and it's just, Ooh. oh my Lord, would you look at that. That is bubbly goodness right there. We have a bread dumpling here. So oh. a bread dumpling is a bread, but it's been steamed 
It's light, it's flaky, it's gorgeous, and it doesn't take anything. It's just, its job is to do nothing but absorb all that sauerkraut, demi-glaze, sour cream goodness. Nice. And we need to take a large ladle like this. Oh my God. As soon as you said oh bread. Oh my. I was like, okay. Oh my the God, meal is, The meal is complete. You don't need anything green on there. Okay, put fine, if you insist. Parsley. Yeah. You put a little bit of parsley. Yeah, you don't really, but it's TV, it's City Line. I had to show up with a bit of parsley, you know? <laughs> but that is it. And this bread is gonna melt. The chunks of pork are just gonna melt with the smoke, the bacon, oh, the kraut, so wow. good. Randy, that looks so delicious. Go inside and give it to Catherine right away before it freezes. Thank you for that. You're going to find uh, <laughs> the Thanks, recipe Grace. for this beautiful hearty goulash on CityLine.tv. We're going to head to break. We've got more Get Outside after the break. Stay with us. Coming up, winter picnics require an elevated menu. This is the main event. Okay, yeah. You're not going to pack sandwiches and hand them out and send everybody home. Yeah. Right? Like, we're all here. We're going to do something. <laughs> Everyone, how does a nice picnic outdoors sound? Are you a little bit skeptical of a winter picnic? Well, Julia Grieve is here to convince us all to get outside and enjoy an outdoor picnic in style. And she's not just saying it, you do this. I do this almost every single weekend in the winter. Every weekend? Every weekend, every Saturday, I absolutely adore it. See, okay, Tracy, hear me out. Okay. This is the problem, <laughs> spend my day here trying to convince everybody. But here's the problem with winter. All we do is we just wait for it to be over with, yes. right? And you just like literally count down the days and then maybe you're lucky to go south one weekend or something. Mm. No, you've got to do things every single week that are exciting. Okay. So what I love about a picnic is that anybody can do it anywhere. True. You don't have to ski, you don't have to skate, you don't have to snowboard, you just have to go outside. And yeah. it becomes an event. And every, and the, you start to sort of plan it midweek. You're like, oh, who's who am I gonna invite this week? Who's coming, what am I gonna serve? What am I gonna wear? But, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, one week just went by. And I had so okay. much fun planning that picnic. It's actually a better way to live life. You can't it just is. wish a whole season away. No, exactly. Like you, you need to actually like have things to look forward yes. to within the winter season. I love the fact that you have these very generous chairs that fit in my whole bum, and I feel like I could take a nap, but what I notice the most about them, like, I'm warm. I know, I said turn mine down. These are heated. They're Can you believe chairs. it? They're amazing. They are from Kuma Outdoor Gear. Oof. Okay, so they're the uh, outdoor, uh, portable, battery-operated, heated chairs. Amazing. So they go into like a little bag so you could like carry them on your back, you know, even if you're watching sports yes. or having a picnic. Three temperatures, you know, high, medium, low. I literally had to turn mine down to see if it's sweaty. It's, yeah. they're so great, so kind. So that is so important, making people feel warm yes. and comfortable. Now I need to ask you about where we're doing our winter picnic. Like where are we picnicking in the winter? Okay, so this is key, right? It's mm. not as easy as like, hey honey, grab the bottle of wine, let's go have a picnic, right? Yeah. It's not, we're not just walking out the door. So you're gonna have to get a little bit organized and location location, location, mm -hmm. very important. Are you gonna have this picnic in your backyard? Is there going to be a barbecue? Be Are nice. you going to have um, a fire pit? Do we need to get permits? Is yeah. there a picnic table? All these things. One major one to keep in mind is wind shelter, uh, like yes. sheltering from the wind. Yes. Because more than the cold, it's the wind that'll do you all in. That's right. So exactly, so can we be behind the garage? Can we be behind these trees? Can we have this? Mm. So planning all of that will be key to your success. Oh, I like the idea of having somewhere that's gonna block the wind. Cause yeah, you're yeah, right, yeah, the yeah, wind yeah. will do you in. Yeah, it does, everyone's like this. You're like, Great. come on guys, don't go home yet. <laughs> 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 but we started the show by you showing us some of the warmest coats that we can wear and jackets that are going to keep us warm. Um, we want to stay warm when we're outside. Yes. So we need to talk about all the ways that we can warm ourselves up outside as well. Okay, so it's, I mean, quite simple, right? Yeah. It's, you know, layers, 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 layers. When you're done, add one more layer. You know, <laughs> like make sure that you've fully done with layers. And yeah. no matter what, as a host, when I'm hosting the picnic, mm -hmm. I will always have 
extra hats and scarves because no matter how many times I told my sister we're staying outside, yeah. she forgets the hat. You know, yeah. so you got to have everybody That's ready to styling. go. I know, you like that one? I know. Oh, I, mean, I love so good. that. Oh, I know, stop it. But that nice. idea of having all of that. And then, Tracy, I'm yes. going to show you these. These are absolutely amazing. Hot Pot Plus. Okay. okay. You know what this is? These are reusable hand warmers. Ooh. Ooh, hostess with the most is handing these out. So basically what they do. I would love do, you if you handed those out. Right? Okay. So you are going to, they just look like this. There's this little metal thing in here. You're going to click it and it basically sets it. And once it sets, it starts to warm up. So there you go. It starts to do oh. that. Amazing, right? So now that is heating it all up. That so is it is cool. warm. Oh, Tracy, you got to feel that. Feel that. Okay. Oh my God. And then when you're That's done with warm. them, the best part is you're going to pop that into boiling water for about five minutes. Yeah. And it'll reset it so you can do it again and again. It feels so good. Right? I'm and getting a bit hot. You know, this is great for you to convince me, but also we're trying to get the audience and all of our viewers outside as well. So the whole audience is going to be taking home the hot pop plus reusable hand warmers. They are awesome. They are going to do the trick. I would put them in my feet. Yes. I put them in the socks. They totally work. They're absolutely wonderful. I love them. So we can't have a picnic without food. Okay. So let's talk is, a little bit about food. This is the main event. Okay. Yeah. We're not going to pack sandwiches and hand them out and send everybody home. Yeah. Right? Like we're all here. We've got to do something. <laughs> so there's nothing more of an event uh, than a traditional Swiss cheese fondue. Oh, we're going to okay? fondue so it. Okay, so this is amazing. So I, you know, got my beautiful fondue pot. Yeah. This is from Cookery, which I adore. It's a women-owned specialty. It's so cute. It's a great specialty cook store. Like, it's just great. So I've yeah. got that. It's already heated up. And then what I do, Tracy, is I always make the fondue before I leave. Smart. Okay, so it's in my uh, thermos here, which mm -hmm. keeps it nice and warm. And oh, little little hack here, okay? Yeah. So when you have your thermos, if you want things to stay extra warm, mm -hmm. like this is a hydro flask, it's a great thermos. It keeps everything warm, but to keep it extra extra warm. Yeah. Put boiling water in it before. Ooh. Let it sit for about five minutes, so the thermos is really hot. Yeah. Then whatever warm thing you're bringing, if it's a soup, if it's yeah. a, oh, look at this, it's steaming. It's steaming. Can we see the steam? Look at this. Oh. Right. Oh. I made this hours ago. So then we just pour in the fondue. That's amazing. There we go. And then it's just, you know, look, it's steaming, Trace. I can't oh, believe it. looks that. good. So, so hot water in here is going to make sure that you're not walking to your picnic with a block of yeah, solid like, It cheese. just keeps it warmer in the beginning, right? Yeah, beautiful. And then you've got the little bowls here. So I prepped some veggies. Oh, nice. Again, these are thermal bowls. It'll keep things warm, keep okay. things cold if you want them to. Got some, some gherkins. Pickles. There we go. you got cheese fondue stick. Get in there. Get so you set this up, you've got your friends with you, people who love the cold yes. and are dressed properly. You've given them their hot pot pluses. People love you. Now they get to eat some cheese. Who doesn't like cheese and bread? I'm... Right? All of a sudden you're going to forget about how cold you are. It's mm -hmm. an event. It feels so great. Mm -hmm. And it's really, Tracy, again, very simple to put together. Really, really easy elements to pull it together. This is delicious. I know. And I love that you're, the fact that you're encouraging us to sort of look at things in a nicer way when it comes yes. to winter. Yeah. Now, what we didn't tell you is that we actually have um, Chef Randy also doing a fondue. <laughs> oh my God, what is this, a fondue off? Um, maybe a little bit. <laughs> I know he's a chef, I'm but not... you are our resident outdoor winter expert, so there's no reason to believe his is going to be any better than yours. Oh my, I am not going up against a, a chef in a fondue off, okay? I'm just going to tell you the truth. Mine came from a package. Whoever gives me... a package, me... I warmed it up, and but it I put it in good. a thermos. And it tastes good. <laughs> Whoever gives me the melted cheese wins, and okay. Randy's not here. All right. So we're yes. going to have that up next. Thank you, Jules. We'll be right back. Stay with us. This is good. Coming up, a good chef always samples their ingredients. This is a rosé and just a little drizzle on top like that. Because mm. we're outside, we'll probably, you know. Just a little, yeah. Are you a person who cherishes good food but prefers to keep things easy and relaxed? Uh, yeah, so do I. Chef Randy is back with the recipe called the Lazy Man's Fondue. So we're going to keep the theme with our winter backyard cooking going. And Chef, I have to admit something to you. We just kind of did a little fondue in studio by Julia Grieve. So we're kind of, it's sort of a fondue off. Now she says she doesn't want to go head to head with the chef. 
but I think that maybe we should be looking at the differences in these recipes. So how lazy is this recipe, chef? Listen, I am mailing this one in. We knew it was an outdoor <laughs> shoot. We knew it was gonna be cold. I'd be like, I'm gonna make something so easy that anybody can make it. Okay, so this is gonna be super easy. I'm looking at your spread. It's already looking actually really good, like better than the spread we had in studio. So I think you're doing really well. <laughs> okay. How do we start? <laughs> <laughs> We're not, are you really gonna make this a competition? This isn't a competition. We're just having some fun out here. And I think cheese always brings the fun. If you really wanna get serious about it though, grab yourself a double cream and not a single cream because the fat level's higher. And if you're to be lazy, you might as well be flavorful. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our double brie, double cream brie, and we're just gonna shave the top off of this baby, right? And you wanna go as, thin as possible. You can leave a little bit of it on. You just want kind of the, the heat to get to it, but you don't want to lose any of the cheese. I got to be honest so with then, you. I what was we're not do... expecting you to use a brie for this. I don't think I've seen a fondue oh. with brie. Oh, well, technically speaking, it's not a fondue. Okay. It just acts like a lazy man's fondue. I love yeah. it. I'm all for it. But it'll give you the same effect, right? Yeah, I think this is something you could execute, Trace. Okay. Then we're gonna go with some chopped up garlic. You're just gonna kind of slide that on top wherever you want, like that. And it's okay if it's a little bit larger because it's gonna go into the oven for some time, right? We're gonna I get like a little that bit more flavor with some rosemary. I like that you just threw the shadiest piece of shade there and then just kept moving on. It's like, yeah, you know what, Tracy? It's so easy, I think you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, come on now. We all know that you lean on that side of the kitchen. You're like, Leo does the cooking, I don't do it. This is something I was simply saying that you could do for Leo. Yeah, okay, And he would you. be impressed. Yes, he would. <laughs> Not shade, not shade. <laughs> then we're just gonna throw it into a small pan. If the brie comes in one of those really nice expensive wooden things, you can leave it right in there. You don't have to throw it into the pan. You just put it on a baking tray then. Okay. And then I'm gonna take some of the Hamptons finest. This is a rosé and just a little drizzle on top like that. Because mm -hmm. we're outside, we'll probably, you know. Just a little, yeah. Little just, to make, just to make sure it's good, you know, <laughs> you don't want to go off. And a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> Delish. I'm happy to tell everyone it's not off, it's very tasty, yes. What you're gonna do is you're gonna roast this in the oven for 30 minutes at 300 degrees. Okay. What do you think the result's gonna be, Tracy? I think it's gonna be the best piece of double cream brie I've ever seen. Like, that is gonna be <laughs> melty goodness after 30 minutes? Oh, yes. When you jiggle it, look at the jiggle. Oh, the jiggle. Oh. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And I know you're clapping, and I really, really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart, but I didn't do anything, anybody. I just <laughs> bought the cheese. Let's be brutally honest here, right? <laughs> now, where you can separate yourself from everybody else is obviously what you're going to do with the cheese now. I got some bagels here, some everything bagels. I've got some prosciutto, some meat sticks for the kids. Got little gherkins, got some olives, some veggies. And you can be healthy and go with the broccoli and carrots. Or you can just double right down and take the prosciutto and wrap it with a meat stick mm. like this. All right. You know, double down on it. And then you just go right into this. And oh, you just yeah. really pull it apart. Dinner is served. Oh, Outdoor winter dinner is oh, served. My God, Tracy, I'm going into this. You got to, you got to take the yeah, rest of the segment. Yeah, you go in, you go in, and but, but I want you to stay there because Julia, Julia, if you can hear me, come on out here. Come on out here. Mm. So it's not even about the fondue. It's not even about the fondue. I want to talk to you about something else. Okay, okay. Did we not just do a full, um, like, segment? We started the show with a segment on dressing proper for the winter, right? Yes. Now, this dude is from Barrie, which if you don't know Ontario, it's north of <laughs> Toronto, a good hour and a half north of Toronto. He should know a thing or two about dressing for the winter. Yes. Look at what Randy's wearing. I know. Okay, but he looks so good. He looks so good. good. He looks so good. But oh, Randy, do you even own gloves, Randy? <laughs> do you have earmuffs? Do you have a toque? Do you have shoes that aren't sneakers? He's wearing sneakers. <laughs> you couldn't see that. I could see that. He's wearing white sneakers. See? Oh my God, Randy! 
Randy Felton. Oh, it's snowing. Oh, my God. I think Randy must be like 17, 17 years old. It's oh, my God. Sauce. It's like two degrees out here. It's, it's barely <laughs> snowing. It's almost rain. And the breeze keeping me warm. Said like a true Canadian. We love you, Chef Randy. We love you too, Jules. Let's go to break. We got more coming up after this. That is hilarious. I have to get to the way in. Embracing outdoor living. I just love the fresh air. I like that it's different. Yeah. It's not the same old. I would go nuts in my house if I was there all mm -hmm. winter. Huh? I would go crazy. Yes, we are celebrating winter today, and how fitting that today's show is all about getting outside and enjoying winter. So, Marilyn Smith, our very own Marilyn Smith, was in the building. Breakfast Television, which is our morning show on City TV, we tape it upstairs in the studio upstairs. We saw Marilyn there, and we're like, hey, Mayor, can you come by? <laughs> Please come to City Line today, because we're talking about celebrating winter. We're talking about getting outside. I shouldn't even be hosting this. I want to be inside <laughs> always. Like... It's good for me to be a part of it because there's so many reasons why we should embrace it, but my, oh my, do you embrace it. Yes. I mean, <laughs> Marilyn goes outside with your husband, Scott, all the time, even when you don't need to. Like, there's no... <laughs> you haven't been evacuated from your house. <laughs> there's no, no fire. <laughs> you, you don't have to... So I thought maybe you were doing it because of the pandemic. You know, we all had to make all, all of these different um, workarounds in order to see our family and friends. Right. So a lot of us ended up going outside. That's not why you do it. You had Christmas outside. <laughs> How yeah. many Christmases have you done outside? Four. <gasps> so, yeah, no, well, but, okay, so we started in the pandemic because it was just Scott and okay. me and a turkey, and I thought, that's so sad. <laughs> you know, like, come on. Anyway, so I thought, let's do something totally different. Yeah. And we'll have a fire, and we're going to cook everything outside. And so we had oh turkey God. sausage, which was burnt, burnt potatoes, burnt <laughs> onions. My bun went on fire. I burnt the s'mores. It was the worst meal ever, and it was the most fun ever. I bet it was. It was memories, and we laughed. And we had such a great time. And I said, we're, from now on, we're never having Christmas in the house. Yeah. We're going to have, we have Christmas Eve in the house with the family. Yeah. And then Christmas Day, it's just me and Scott and a couple of wieners. <laughs> and a <laughs> it's so A couple fun. of wieners with a couple of wieners. <laughs> oh, yeah, big time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to know what you love so much about it. Because for me, the thought of, of, of doing that, all I'm thinking of is the cold. What do you love about it? Is it because it makes it special? Um, you know what? I've always embraced all the seasons because yeah. I think that if you're in this season and you're longing for the one before or after, you're not in the moment, right? You're right. And I think what I learned the most from my concussion is that we really have to live in this moment because that's all yes. we've got, right? So I, we always were outside people anyway, but that yeah. was even more of an, an impetus. And so, yeah, I, I, I just love the fresh air. I like that it's different. Yeah. It's not the same old. I would go nuts in my house if I was there all would, winter. Huh? I would go crazy. Yeah, you've got a lot of good energy. You I, need to burn that energy. Oh, wow. And, you know, we created our backyard, so it's called... Well, I call it the magical fairy garden. Yes. So there's twinkly lights. It's magical out there. Yeah. And, you know, winter's kind of like gets on your nerves anyway. So I, we try to make it not get on your nerves by celebrating it and being outside and just, it, I guess, embracing it is the, is the best word I can come up with. Yeah. Let me tell you, when you wake up in the morning and you see that beautiful blanket of snow oh, everywhere, yeah. that's when I feel like it does feel magical. And yeah. then you have your gorgeous garden, um, which I've seen. You've put so much work into <laughs> it. So that is really beautiful. Outside of Christmas, so if you invite me over, Mayor, yes. are we being outside? Oh, like, bitch. oh yes. Are we? So totally. we're going to, so do you give me a dress code? Oh, yeah. I, I say... For, like, don't wear this. Don't wear this. And, uh, okay, so I have snow pants and he, foot warmers. I have electric yeah. socks. Oh, uh, well, battery socks. You. Yeah, yeah. Actually, they're broken. I have to get a new pair. Yes. I, I, I use them up too much. Uh, big hats, blankets, the whole thing. So you have to dress for that. You do. And I, I have extras if you forget. Love um, that. But, yeah, you're going to be outside. We're going to have a wiener roast. We're going to have smearlins. What uh, are smearlins? Smearlin <laughs> is... <laughs> what are 
Christmas, Marilyn. Well, s'mores are highly overrated. Like there's you a so? dried out gra a graham yeah. cracker, yeah. a hunk of chocolate that freezes, totally. and then you put the hot marshmallow on, big deal, nothing happens, right? <laughs> it all falls apart. So I came up with a chocolate brownie fudgy cookie. Okay. And uh, I had my husband bring this over so that we would have this. I have uh, Oh, you're professional we, marshmallow uh, roast roaster. roast marshmallows over marshmallow the fire. Roaster. I'm a marshmallow roaster, yes. yes. And then you put it between, and I warm the cookies up right beside the fire so they feel like they're out of the oven. And then it nestles in there and it is amazing. I bet it is. Yeah, it really is. So we, we entertain, all the whole the whole winter we entertain. If you're coming for dinner, yeah. I mean, unless it's like a, you know, Christmas Eve dinner or it's formal, but yeah, you know, everything else we do outside. So you're bringing people over, you're doing it, are you, do you cook inside and bring it out? No. You cook, you do it all outside? Yeah, well, it's just a wiener roast. Come on, you yeah. cook your own. I'm not even doing anything. Okay, I mean, I just it. bring the tray out and everybody does their own thing and if yeah. you wreck it, it's your fault. Okay, uh, I love yeah. that. Yeah, it's everyone, no pressure. You, you take responsibility for your own wiener. <laughs> Yes. It's really a mantra for life. That's a hashtag, yes. isn't it? Hashtag, yeah. you, you're Look responsible after your, your wiener. own wiener. <laughs> what would you say to someone, what would you say to someone like me who's just like, I don't like hanging out in the cold? Like, what would you say? I know I have to dress properly, but That's a big what's, thing. Your, what's your advice for, uh, for folks that are hesitant to lean into the season? Dress warmly and embrace yeah. life, and part of life is winter. And if yes. you don't want to live in winter, then move someplace else. So yeah. we're Canadian, and you just have to go with it. I'm from Vancouver. Right. I mean, I first came here, and I thought I was going to freeze to death. Yeah. So now, you know, I'm 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 in there. I'm doing it. I'm yeah. Just embrace. Just go for it. You just, just got to go it. for it. I mean, just as a hockey it. mom, I feel like I am. Like I've been forced to embrace the winter season. Yes. There's so much that happens in the winter. Yes. But I still pick up the phone and I call my mom and dad and I say, "Why? <laughs> you were in Jamaica. Why?" And they were like, for all the good reasons, <laughs> plus the snow, you enjoy it, honey, and dress properly. Right. Just I love your Smarolins. No That's a bad great weather, idea. just bad clothing, right? That's, That's right. right. Yeah, okay. good. Anyway, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for hanging out with us. Let's go to break. we got more coming up. Stay with us. <laughs> you. Yes, you. I've got a seat in City Line's audience waiting just for you. Head to cityline.tv slash tickets to go behind the scenes with your favorite experts, the chance at great giveaways, plus all the unexpected fun of bringing City Line to your screens. What are you waiting for? Go click. We can't wait to see you. City Lines experts can help you. We're looking for suggestions. What would you recommend? What tips might you have? With everything from decor dilemmas. Martin, if you can help me with a sunken living room. Fashion finds. And what to wear as the mother of the bride. Fabulous food and so much more. You are in good hands. Send us your videos, pictures, and questions to submissions at cityline.tv or scan the code on your screen to get expert advice for real life. Let me know. Thanks. Goodies. Every day, our lucky audience gets snacks in our studio, and that's thanks to Nom's Organic Bites. The decadent treat is refined sugar free. It's made with only four simple, wholesome ingredients. The Nom's Ultimate Variety Pack comes with almond, coconut, hazelnut, and pistachio snack, snack bite pouches, and it's been keeping our audience energized and fueled up. What do you guys think of your snacks? Isn't that nice? <laughs> it's one thing we got. From our audience, they said we would love a little sustenance while we're here enjoying the show. And of course, we delivered. And that is the end of our show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marilyn, for coming down and hanging out with us. Jules, Chef Randy, I loved it. I hope we inspired you to get outside. See you tomorrow, everybody.